grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in the waters of baptism, our brother Donald died with Christ. May he now rise with him into eternal glory. And I bless him one more time, reminding us the day of his baptism when he became a child of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant Donald, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, we may come before your face our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And I invite you to be seated for the liturgy of the word. Steve, you may come forward for the first reading. Good morning, and thank you everyone for coming for my father's funeral. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal. 
A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit have workers from their toil? I've seen the business that God has given to mortals to be busied about. God has made everything appropriate to its time, but he's put the timeless into their hearts so they cannot find out from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognized that there is nothing better than to rejoice and to do well during life. Moreover, that all can eat and drink and enjoy the good of all their toil. This is a gift of God. I recognize that whatever God does will endure forever. There's no adding to it or taking from it. Thus has God done that he may be revered. The word of the Lord. Linda, you can come forward. Thank you. The response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I, nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. To still waters, he leads me. He restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Tim, please come forward for the second reading. On behalf of my family, I want to thank everyone for attending today. Donald will be honored. This is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, 
they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put childish things aside. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, and love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When he saw the crowds, he went up the mountains, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. may be seated. On behalf of Father Kelly, Deacon Ron, Sister Nancy, and myself, we extend our deepest condolences to Audrey and the entire family. You know, today is a day that we pause and reflect, because as we heard in our readings, which were so beautifully selected, it is a time of change. Our brother, Don, who has gone to the rest in, his, in peace of Christ, has seen many changes throughout his long life. A brother, a father, a husband, a grandfather. This year, as a parish, we decided to dedicate 
ourselves to the Holy Family. And we've been praying that through the intercession of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, our family will be bound together so that nothing separates us. In my years talking to Don, he explained to me how important his family was. Not only his immediate family of his children and grandchildren, but also his parish family. As many of you know, our brother was very active in this parish. Both he and his wife could quite often could be heard in singing songs over the decades. And because our brother has gone to his place of rest, it doesn't mean that the songs are ended. It may seem like a silent night, but this is a joyful time. We hear in the reading from St. Paul that love is patient, love is kind. Speaking to Don these past couple of years, I always remarked how I could never imagine being with someone for so long. And our dear brother and his wife, 73 years of marriage, but I believe 75 years together. My brothers and sisters, when St. Paul talks about love being patient and kind, this is what St. Paul means. A love that is so great that is bound together by God will never be broken. Now I'm sure there were times in Don's life when he may have lost his patience as a human, but the patience that God gave him as a father and as a husband always lived in his heart. At a time in our country when there's division, especially on this day before we are to pull out of Afghanistan, we are reminded of the great service our brother not only had for, his, for God, but also for his country. He served his country proud. And throughout the years, especially here in Boston Spa, he showed that patriotic love year after year. The flag was so important to him because the flag reminded us of the gift that God gave us as Americans to live in freedom, to live in peace. And that's what our brother fought for, not only in the war, but throughout his life. He always stayed close to God. And so when we hear in our Gospel of Matthew, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who meek, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are those poor in spirit. Jesus reminds us that we feel these emotions. We hunger for the truth. We hunger for joyfulness. We hunger to inherit everything that God has promised. Our brother lived his life well here on earth, and so now he receives those rewards because at this point he is comforted. He has inherited the land that was promised by God he has been shown mercy. And my brothers and sisters, as we offer the sacrifice of the Mass on behalf of our brother, we pray that he soon will see the face of God. As we continue to pray for our brother, let us also pray for Audrey, his wife, that through this time, again going back to the scriptures, blessed are they who mourn, a wife now separated from her husband, and she may mourn, but in her heart, I guarantee you, she knows that she will be comforted. Don and Audrey have lived out their faith. They've struggled with their faith, but they've always turned to God. As we celebrate this Mass here today, let us be mindful how many times Don and Audrey would walk down to this church so that they can feel the peace and the love that comes from God and God alone. In a few moments, when we are in the presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, we are reminded that this is a time for us to bring all of our intentions to our Heavenly Father. 
especially on behalf of our dear brother, that he may now rejoice in the love of God and enjoy the face of God now and for always. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of all those who trust in our Lord Jesus. We now join our prayers to his. For Donald, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Donald, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives, especially Jennifer Dannison, Eleanor Dougherty, Edward Hoprick Jr., Roger Reese, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of Donald, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of the bond between Christ and the church. Grant peace and mercy to your servant Don, who is united in love with his wife Audrey. May the care and devotion of his life here on earth find a lasting reward in heaven. Look kindly on his wife, children, and entire family as now they turn to you for compassion and love. We pray that you strengthen their faith and lighten their loss. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Donald, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones, minions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate the sacred mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us the eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Donald, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection. And from the earth you will rise up the flesh of all those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all our pleasing few at their passing of this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you'll wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you throughout the, all the ages and bestow on all the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand, and together we pray the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please kneel.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ be saved for eternal life. At this time, we've come to the summit of our Eucharistic celebration. For those of you who are Catholic wishing to receive the body of Christ, we invite you to come down the center aisle. If you're one of our Christian brothers and sisters and would like to receive a blessing, we invite you to come down too. Just cross your chest and a blessing will be given to you.
this time, we'll inscribe our brother Don's name into our book of remembrance, which is kept on our St. Joseph altar. And by doing so, he'll be prayed for each and every Sunday when we celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass here on behalf of his family at St. Mary's Parish. You may remain seated for our final prayers. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that your servant Donald, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from all sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways and take leave of our brother Donald, may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. And one day, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which covers all things, destroys even death itself. And at this time, we'll perform one of the church's most ancient rituals, the incensation. Incense is used as a sign of the community's prayers for the deceased rising to the throne of God in heaven and a sign of farewell. First, we'll incense the crucifix, reminding us of Jesus' suffering on the cross and the victory that he brought through his resurrection. We'll incense our Easter candle, which reminds the faithful of Christ's undying presence in our world and the light he brings to us. And finally, we'll incense the body of our dear brother Don as a sign of honor, which through his baptism, his body was a temple of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend to you our dear brother Donald in the sure and certain hope 
that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon God in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of the fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. In the peace of Jesus Christ, let us now take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> 